Jesus, thank you, thank you uh, for your prayers. Um, wow, it is so good to be home. I want to say uh, greetings from. Oh, hi, Lena. How are you doing? There's my neighbor, Lena. Just love seeing you right up there. I want to say greetings from the Victory Home of Champions in Rwanda, Africa. They give their best. I'm telling you, some of you guys need to go with us again. That was a life-changing experience. Um, I also want to say a special hello to everybody joining us, not just in Africa, but whether they're joining us um, downtown at the at Ruth and Naomi's or at the Joshua House online. Um, who else? Wagner Hills. Oh, come on. Okay, I got. I'm watching the service in the market in Rwanda. Now they're ten years. Uh, ten years. They're like felt like it. They're ten hours ahead of us. Okay, so I'm still on Rwandan time. So bear with me, please. We're ten hours ahead of you guys down there. So we're in the future. You know, some of you guys are calling me and asking for the waiting lottery numbers. It doesn't work that way. Um, it was a joke. So anyway, we're there in the market and we're watching you guys live and Pastor Charmaine and Coach James, they just brought the word of God. And I'm thinking, wow, thank you, production team and media team. You do such a great job. It felt like we were there. It was kind of a surreal moment, but um, it was something amazing to experience. So welcome. This is our first 1130 service. Right? 11 o'clock service. Sorry, I'm going to get my times right. What time is it? It's 11 o'clock right now. 11 o'clock service. Thank you for joining us uh, in-house and online. Uh, thanks to everyone that came for our first 9.30 service. Was that right? <laughs> 9.30 we had this morning. Good turnout. How many of you are, 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 are double dipping? You're going for another service today. Right on! God, oh, praise God. That's cool. Um, I promised you that it's not going to be the same as the first service, and it won't be. It won't be. My, my notes are different. There might be some, some similarities, but God wants to do something different. He's got a different word for you, Jasmine. It's a true thing. It's a true story. Ryan, he's, God's got a word for you. You know, God set you up to be here at this time in this place. Now, it might have been your, your loved one that forced you to come here or bribed you to come here, but no, no, God had a plan for you. And his plans are to prosper you, not to harm you, give you a hope in a future. Amen. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11. So this is our new series. We call it The Hunt. What is it that you are searching for? And I've entitled this teaching, Where to Look. I shared a cute story this morning. I didn't, I wasn't going to share it, but I'm going to share it now because it's just funny how God has a sense of humor. Have you noticed that about our Lord? So I shared about how, you know, sometimes we misplace things or we're looking for things that we cannot find. They might be keys, they might be a phone, they might be wallet. Well, it just so happened I get a call this morning and I accidentally took my wife's keys to church. So she was stranded at home and she's like, have you seen my keys? And um, I did. And then thank the Lord for Coach DJ. He went all the way out to Cultus Lake and rescued my wife and kids so they can be here for the services. So yay! <laughs> So we had a layover in Paris, super cool. Never been to Paris before. I was actually a little disappointed. <laughs> That's another story. Uh, Amsterdam was awesome. Paris, I pray for you. But when I, was in, when I was in Paris, saw the Eiffel Tower, true story. We get off the train after being on the train for I don't know how long. And Paris was quite dirty, you know? Um, people are beautiful everywhere you go. But uh, we get off, we get off out of the train station. We we come out from underground and we look up. We see the Eiffel Tower. And I think Dave's like, huh, oh, it's not so impressive. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't until you come up to it close from a different perspective. Come on, you see the vastness of it. And it's actually quite magnificent, you know. Um, but while we're in in Paris, there's all these museums that you can visit. We didn't have time to visit. Um, but there's this quote by Vince Van Gogh, and it goes like this. If I cease searching, then woe to me, I am lost. This is what I, this is how I look at it. Keep going and keep coming what may. Vincent Van Gogh said that. Now, you may not know this, but Vincent Van Gogh lived just outside of Paris, 27 kilometers outside of Paris. And, you know, on our missions trip, we in this layover in Paris, I, I thought of this and I thought of this quote and then throughout our travels, uh, this quote reminded me of the importance 
I've never stopped searching <laughs> and always keep going no matter what comes our way. That's right. Never stop searching. Always keep going. For those of you that like Finding Nemo, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. But um, yeah, we got to keep searching. We got to keep looking. I have found, you know, I have many fond, fond memories as we go into the Easter season. Um, my mom, many of you may know that she celebrated like every holiday. She took it to another level. Now she's celebrating with Jesus. She's in heaven. And uh, a lot of these memories were around hiding Easter baskets and Easter goodies. So we've, we've taken that same tradition in our own family. And it's so much fun to be the one that hides the baskets and then laugh as your kids can't find them, you know? And I found that there's so many times where the basket is right there beneath them and they can't see it. So we play this game of hot and cold. I don't know if you guys ever play the game, hotter, hotter, colder, colder. And they get so frustrated and they miss the gift that is right there in front of them even though they can't see it, it's right there. And you know, the same goes in our own lives. We can become hot and cold in our relationships with each other and with God, and we can miss the gift that is right in front of us. No joke. So what is it that you are possibly looking for in this season? And what is it that you've been looking for and that maybe is right in front of you the whole time? If we are to discover what it is that we are looking for, then we need to start with where we are looking. And I think no better place than to start with the resurrection story found in Luke 24, verses 13 to 15. Now, I'm not going to be able to go through all of Luke 24 and as much of the scripture as I did this morning, but I will give you a quick snapshot of what's going on. This is right after Jesus had been crucified and three days later, um, some of the women were going to go to the body and bring um, incense and stuff to the body. And they weren't sure how they were even to get to the body of Jesus because they had put this big stone in the way and they put Roman soldiers in front because they heard word that, you know, Jesus said he was going to come back and, and resurrect from the grave. And they were worried, well, then maybe the, some of the disciples would steal his body. So Roman soldiers, come on, legit, in front of this thing, big stone. They're not even sure how they're going to move this thing. Well, when they get there, what do they find? An empty tomb, a stone rolled away, um, a bunch of Roman soldiers that are crying and terrified and ran away because the angels had appeared. So they find an empty tomb. It's not what they were looking for. They're looking for the body of Jesus. Here's there's an empty tomb and his burial clothes. They're all nicely folded and put away. And then there's also this messenger that happens to be there and says, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Come on. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? And so we're going to fast forward now into verse 13 of Luke 24. And if you brought your Bibles, would you do me a favor and hold them up? Just so I know, come on class, even if they glow, look at all these glowing ones, I love that. Yes, you can use your phone in church, it's quite all right. I believe they put the QR code behind me, if not, they probably will. It's got my notes, and you can follow along using your um, version app or your Bible on there. But I encourage you to follow along, and I encourage you to take some notes. And I'm gonna ask uh, if the media team doesn't mind just turning up the lights a little bit, because I see the first four people in the front rows. They are so good looking, but wow, there's even more good looking people in the house. Look at that. Thank you. Hey, so how you doing, man? Looking good, buddy. See, I wouldn't have seen you if it weren't for the light. Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You're going to get a little more light, Sean, on your situation as we get into the word today. Let's go. Okay, we're going to start uh, Luke 24 in verse 13 for the second service. We get to start in verse 13. Now, the same day, it says that two of them, these were two of Jesus' uh, followers. Uh, so the same day after the, the women had witnessed this, oh, by the way, the women ran back, told the men, and the men didn't believe the women. Men, listen to women, Okay. So uh, it says, but they did not believe the women because the words seemed like nonsense. And then we go down to verse 13. Now the same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and they discussed these things with each other, whoa, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. This is my first question for you guys. What am I missing along the way? Huh? What have you been missing along the way? Could it possibly be that you've been caught in conversation and that you're missing Christ? 
What is it that you're missing along the way of your journey of what you're seeking and what you're searching for that is maybe right there in front of you, but you don't see it? It's a beautiful thing, you know, when Christ interrupts our conversations. There's so many times he's saved, saved me from saying the wrong thing or continuing on a conversation that I probably shouldn't be on. Uh, in Africa, I was having these conversations with myself. Anyone talk to themselves, by the way? Anyone, you know what? Apparently, we're geniuses. If you talk to yourself, you're really a wise person. I, I, I read it somewhere, so it must be true. Um, so all you that talk to yourself, you're not insane. You are a genius. <laughs> so uh, in Africa, I was talking to myself, uh, and I was beginning to doubt about this mission in what we were supposed to deliver. Okay, so doubt started to creep into my mind. Why? Because you know when you come from a certain culture and a certain way of doing things, you have a certain standard. Well, in Africa, not a lot of power, if any. Very limited tools. And, and, and the work we had to do was a big job. We had to renovate this, this kitchen they've been using for centuries. I don't know, since the beginning of Moses. And they would have these wood fires in there and cook in there. And it wasn't properly vented. So the whole place is covered in soot. We need to remove. We get to remove the roof. Put a new roof on it. We get to scrub down those walls we get to remove a whole ton of concrete and brick hey Dave by hand like we're talking old school we're talking it was cool for about the first two minutes of waving you know like we're getting the video in of the sledgehammers you know Dave's muscles flexing yeah you know two minutes in it's like oh this is tough. And then the African women, let's talk about the African women. Then they showing up us men because they're coming in there, you know, with picks and stuff. And then we're trying to keep up with the women there in Africa. They're making us look bad. Anyway, true story. I was starting to doubt that we we're even going to get this job done like it was even possible. And so we need to move all these bricks, tons of bricks uh, by hand and, and, and replace the roof and then take down a chimney like we broke so many there was no building codes there's no safety well we did wear safety glasses that's true but I learned the hard way the first time I started like I'm hitting the bricks and then I'm like yo do you think you guys got any safety goggles and by the next hit I had a piece of stone fly into my eye let's just start praying and crying <laughs> And then uh, the nurse there that happens to be uh, Pastor Elizabeth, she's a nurse. She helped me with that situation. I got a break so Dave could keep working while I, <laughs> I milked that Dave. <laughs> Confession hour. <laughs> I got to have sight, you know. <laughs> keep working, bro. <laughs> be with Jesus. <laughs> but um, yeah, and, and, and honest truth, I don't think we have that video. But if you get a chance... Uh, maybe I'll, I think I shared it on Facebook, but it was it was a lot of work. But I began to doubt that we even had what it took, you know, to get this uh, job done in the amount of time we need to do it. Because we would work all day, and then we'd preach in the evening, teach in the evening, and uh, that was good. It was good. Praise God, we got to do it, and we got the job done. Um, but yeah, I doubted that we had, and at first, like looking at our, you know, we're, we're good looking guys, but a lot of us, that's gym muscles. Let's be honest, Dave. Let's be honest, Jeremy. It's just like, we're good up to a point. <laughs> I got so many stories for you guys. I, okay, I'll keep going. But um, it wasn't until Pastor Elizabeth, she shared this story about a woman named Deborah and this other powerful woman named JL. It's in Judges 4. I think Pastor Charmaine has preached on it before. Powerful message. I don't have time to get into all of it, but let's just say uh, these mighty women of God stepped up when the men wouldn't. Come on. And JL found herself in a situation where all she had was a cup of milk, a blanket, and a tent peg. Let's go. <laughs> and she was able to take down this general with just those three things. Yeah, now you're going to have to go read it in Judges 4. I just got to tell you, heads up, it's graphic. But, you know, she was able to do this with what limited resources. And then I thought all of a sudden, I was like, wait a minute, where am I limiting God? What does God give? If, if she can do it with these three simple things, what can God do with us if we believe in him? And just step out of our comfort for a moment and allow God to step in. Um, so it was in the process of, of, of putting that into the application of, of the word into like, well, what is that going to look like today, guys? And like, what's our cup of milk? What's our blanket? What's our peg? you know, that we're going to need to get this job done. And that's when we discovered and started to see things in a different light from a different perspective, Gary. We started to see that it wasn't about us. 
it wasn't about the project, it was about the people. And we were searching and trying to find ways to get the project done, but the Lord is like, no, 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 no. You're my project. And those are my people. <laughs> and I have something that I want to say and do through them. And then all of a sudden I got this bright idea because one of the guys was saying, you know, in Rwanda, the part of Rwanda we're in, they get paid five to six dollars a day for labor. And I'm like, come on, I'll be the first to admit I'm not the smartest. I'm not the most gifted. I'm not the most talented. Maybe we could work with the community of people that are stronger, more talented than us and invest in our community for like, what, a cup of coffee a day? So we, we said to one of the, the staff, who's one of the workers there with us, Cedric, um, and a lot of them don't speak English well, so we have a translator. Um, and so he translates them like, Cedric, do you know anybody that we could hire to work with us in the community? It's like, yeah. He takes off, he literally goes outside the gate, across the street, and he hires people off the street. Three men come back. And at first, I'm gonna be honest with you, I was frustrated with them because like I'm paying them to get a job done to work with me and I can't get them to work. I can't, English is a barrier. I can't seem to communicate. And then I realized what's going on is they're actually negotiating the cost to get this job done. So I'm like, oh, okay, I see what we're doing here. But God had bigger plans. Again, it wasn't about the project. It was about the people. And you know, as they worked on it, I got to connect with them. You know, 90% of what you're saying is in your body language anyway. And it was a culture shock for us. Because a lot of these guys, they didn't even have shoes. They're going barefoot, they're breaking brick, you know, doing things with their hand, they're climbing the chimney, they're taking things down. And then we've got a, 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 a welder there that's just, dude, he shows up on his dirt bike. It's got, Gary, you'll love this. It's like a 100cc dirt bike. And he built this little welder. I don't know how, how he built this thing. It's on the back of his dirt. It's the most primitive thing, yet the work he was doing was incredible. And we connected with him. Well, before you know it, I'm inviting them to church. Come on, right? Yeah, for real. I'm like, so I, I, I connect with this welder. His name is Gas, uh, Gaspar. He might be watching right now. Dude, if you're watching, I highly respect you. And so I'm like filming him. I'm like, yo, this is gonna be on YouTube, you know? Like, And then later I said, well, I have my translator there with me, Iggy. And I'm like, hey, ask him like, will he come to church on Sunday? He's like, no, no. He's like, he says, uh, I don't have a Bible. I'm like, you don't have a Bible. I run to my room, I get him a Bible. I'm like, yo, here you go, you got a Bible now. Uh, I can't read English. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So Iggy, do you have any Rwandan Bibles? Yeah, we do. How much? $8. Let's get this guy a Bible. Get him a Bible, sign the Bible. And I'm like, yo, you got a Bible now? You come to church? Yeah, I'll come to church. His apprentice is with him and he says, I tell you what, you come to church with Gaspar and then I'll get you a Bible too. Okay, I'll come to church. They come to church, they get saved, they both get baptized. <laughs> It wasn't about the project. It's always about the people. You know, we're searching for all kinds of things and God is searching to do something, not just around us, but in us. You know, the hunt always starts in our heart, right? And he's after our heart. He's after your friend's heart. He's after your neighbor's heart. And he'll send you all the way across to the ends of the earth to reach somebody that somebody else might overlook or look past. Jesus is walking with these men. And they're so fixated on the past that they miss Jesus in the present. And we're no different. We, we may give up hunting for him uh, when he's been there the whole time. We just need to know where to look. We can stop hunting for what's been in our heart the whole time. Again, we just need to know where to look. And so in the scripture here, as Jesus is walking with them, he asks them in uh, verse 17, he says, <laughs> this is good. What are you discussing? What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood there with their faces downcast. One of them uh, named uh, Cleopas asked him, are you, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have been happening in these days? Huh. My second point is, what are you talking about? I mean, if Jesus was to just show up and you're walking along and let's be honest, a lot of the times he's there, you just don't see him. You know, what are your conversations around? Are they around the chaos of this world or are they around him? Are they around Christ? 
You know, if you, if you were just catch yourself before you wreck yourself, you know, when you're in the middle of the conversation and realize if Jesus were to ask you, what are you talking about? You know, he cares about your conversations. He cares about what's coming out of your mouth. He cares if, you're, if your words are, are breaking people down or building them up. He cares enough to ask you, what are you talking about? What are your conversations about? You ever struggled with understanding God's plan? <laughs> yeah, come on. It's amazing how we can miss what's right in front of us when our minds are clouded with the wrong conversations, right? We try to understand what's going on around us and happening to us as opposed to what's happening in us, for us. Again, is your conversations one around Christ or is it around chaos? Is it lifting you up? Is it lifting others up? Or is it bringing people down in despair? This conversation was one that was, was creating despair. And we don't understand. We need to talk to the right people. Be careful who you go to. Be careful who you get con uh, caught in conversations with. You get caught in the trap pretty quick. I've had to learn sometimes to, when people come to me and they ask me like, hey, Matt, what do you think about this? I just say, I don't. To be honest, I got enough drama in my own life. <laughs> I'm going to get caught up in other people's. Or I do my best to shift the conversation, and especially if somebody's talking about other people with an opinion. You know, I like to come in with, actually, I really like this about them. And I find this to be a strength. And this to be something neat that's happening in their life because, you know, every, our words should be like salt. They should have flavor. They should be lifting people up, building people up, right? Just, you can, you can change the atmosphere of a conversation by what you tolerate, what you let in, and what you speak out. Come on. So, yeah, praise God. So don't feel bad the next time Christ comes and interrupts your conversation because you've got a conscience. And you got the Holy Spirit speaking through you and just all saying, you know, like, and remember, when you don't say something, you're saying something. Sometimes we omit to, to say the right things, to speak up for people, and, and, and to point the conversation to Christ. So I encourage you in your, in your conversations, in, while you're searching and seeking in your, in your hunt and what you're looking for. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And we don't understand, it comes back to going to the right people. You need to know God's promises and you need to understand God's purpose. You know, I make a point to purpose to go to the right people. I go to people that are way ahead of me. I go to people that have been put in leadership and authority over me. I mean, this pastor's got a pastor. I go to Pastor Morris and Pastor Lucinda. You know, I even get to go to uh, uh, Dr. George and Hazel, my wife and I get to go to them. They're saying, hey, there's things we don't understand. And I'd rather not go through just the school of hard knocks. I'd, I'd rather seek wise counsel. Come on, guide me, direct me. Hey, don't just tell me what I want to hear. Tell me what I need to hear, right? So where we go is important on what we're searching for. In Proverbs eleven fourteen, it says, where there is no guidance, the people fall, but in abundance of counselors, there is victory. Say victory. Mm, come on. Matthew 7, 7, our theme for, verse for this series says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. You see, the Holy Spirit gives us the discernment and the wisdom to help us discover God's way. Proverbs 4, 5 to 6 says, get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. For the beginning of wisdom is this. You get wisdom. <laughs> That's what it says. Though it cost all that you have, get understanding. Cherish her. She will exalt you. Embrace her. She will honor you. Whoo! Powerful words. In this case, Jesus himself pointed them to the word of God. Jesus, the word pointing to the word. It's pretty cool, hey? It's really cool if you think of it. In First John says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. His word is alive, it's active, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's active. It reveals things deep within us, deep within our hearts. He points them to the word. The word that is speaking the word is saying, go to the word. You want to hear from me? Go to my words. 
have some more red letter days. Go through the New Testament. And, and some of you have Bibles where it's actually red letters. That's the words right out of the mouth of Jesus. You want to hear him, read his word. You'll recognize his voice. And then you'll be able to say, well, that doesn't really sound like Jesus. In the case of Jesus, he points him to the word. And it seems like nonsense when the women report about the empty tomb. But yet it was always a part of God's plan. It was written in his word. What's written that we are missing? What is it that's written in God's word that we're missing that's right in front of us the whole time? It was right in front of them. Prophesied by the prophet Isaiah 700 years before this took place, that this would happen. Verse 25. Let's go to verse 25. Luke uh, 24. So Jesus says to them, how foolish you are and how slow, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Oh, there's an exclamation mark there. Sorry, I didn't read it right. <clears throat> Let's try it again from the top. How foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. <laughs> I read it like it's written. I try. Did not Christ have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophecy, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Here's the third point. Maybe you've figured this out already. But seeking can come with suffering. Seeking can come with suffering. It's not always an easier road to do the right thing. We look for the best, but the best doesn't always come out of us. And sometimes we or others, we slip up, we make mistakes. And suffering can be one of those things that causes us to become slow to believe. Yet Jesus is saying that he had to suffer in order to succeed. Because of the, what before him? The cross. Because of the cross, he was able to endure the suffering. The cross set before him. Can you see past your cross and see God's calling on your life? Can you understand that word? We've talked about it. Passion. First introduced in the Latin language was passio, which means to suffer. No, nobody in the Western world thinks of passion as suffering. They think of it as a feeling. Oh, it's just a feeling, an emotion. It's like, ah, I lost my passion. Really? It's the ability to suffer through to what God has called you to. Jesus was willing to suffer through the cross because he was called to you. He was called to me. He was called to set us free of sin and condemnation. So next time, if you know the context, you know the purpose of something, maybe you won't abuse it. And you'll realize that the road, the road to success is paved with both pain and pleasure. Are you willing to have the passion to suffer for or suffer to what God is calling you through? Praise God. And Jesus had to suffer so that we could seek and find our salvation. There was only one way. The cross was always the way. Only one sacrifice could pay the price for all of our sin. A pure, a, a pure and spotless lamb. It was always written. It was always part of the plan. None of us could do that. Only through this gift of atonement, through a sacrificial sin to pay the price for all of that. Only through Jesus. There's only one way to the Father. And that's through the Son. You know, his, you know fast forward, his, his followers would have this upper room experience with those that were willing to seek him and come together as one. It was in the upper room when they were in one accord, not a Honda, when they came together in one accord. <laughs> when they came together as one is when the Holy Spirit showed up. The baptism of the Holy Spirit and it showed up like tongues of fire on their heads and you're going to hear more about that as we go on in the series. And how the evidence of that and they spoke in all different languages and the people that were there from different countries and dialect recognized the languages in which they spoke and everyone else thought they were nuts. When they spoke up, this was prophesied. You know why? It was written. Will we know where to find what it is that we are looking for? We will, if we understand who it is that we are looking for. 
Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Would you stand with me, church? I have a verse for you. I have a verse with you to take with you, to read, to meditate on, to share, share with your children, share with your friends. Get in a connect group this week, please. Go deeper. If you're, if you're a lady, come to women's. There's a women's conference going on. It's going to blow your mind in a good way. Men, send them. You'll be so happy you did. They're going to come change forever. But the verse that I have for you is, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119, 11. What's hidden in your heart? Could it possibly be that the thing you're hunting for is right there in your heart the whole time? Or maybe you're missing that thing in your heart and that's a relationship with Jesus. If you would understand that the resurrection is actually a revelation and that is about relationship, not religion. That's why Jesus came. Let's pray. Lord, would you give me eyes to see that you're right here with me? Lord, would our hearts be open in this season as we seek for you and search for you that we find you right here in our hearts. Lord, I'm praying for for those that have been struggling, seeking, that have been let down. Some have even been let go in relationships. Some have held on to things that are no longer lifting them up, but holding them back. And I pray that you give them the strength to let go and just let you be today. That you would move Holy Spirit in a mighty way. That you just meet them where they're at. Meet us where we're at. That we would see what it is that we're searching for is right there in front of us. Your word says that you stand at the door and knock. Whoever opens will receive you. And Lord, I pray the hearts will be open now in this moment. I'll tell you what, church, what I want to do right now is I want you to get have the ability to just let go and let God. No matter what you've been going through, no matter what you've been looking for, I pray that you would just be able to let go right now and let him in. He's here to meet you where you're at. Some of the things that you've been holding on to are never yours to hold on to. And it's time that you lay it at the foot of the cross. And it's time that you walk out of here lighter than you came in. Paul said this in Romans 10 verse 9, that if we believe in our heart, confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God the Father raised his son from the grave, that we will be saved. It starts with a belief in our heart and a confession with our mouth. Just let him in. Don't go another moment on this journey alone without God's super touching your natural. Let's pray together. I'm going to ask that you pray this prayer with me. If you've prayed it before, you pray. Pray it again. If if you've never prayed this prayer before, pray so with your whole heart. Maybe today's your comeback moment. That God wants to renew and resurrect something in you that you thought was dead. Let's pray. Just say this. Say, dear Jesus, Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for dying. Thank you for taking on my sin and nailing it to the cross. Thank you for rising from the grave three days later. I'm ready. I'm ready to lay it all down. To turn from my way and to turn to you. Forgive me of my sins. I thank you that my past is past. I choose to make you Lord over my life, to be my God, to be my Savior, and to be my friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Just stay in the moment, eyes closed in this moment. This is a holy moment. God's been speaking to you. He's been moving through you. Ho! Some of you don't even know what God's about to do for you. Sometimes there's things in our way that we've been tripping over that we didn't even realize were there. But God is removing that today. Several things that I believe God wants to do today is one is this is a house of prayer. This is a house of healing. And the first healing that I I believe that people have witnessed today is the healing of hope. And if you received hope in the word of God that that I delivered, that God delivered through me today, it's not about me, it's about him, but you received hope through the word today, would you just put your hand up in the room and say, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Give God some praise. That's him, that's his word. The second is this. 
If you prayed that prayer in which we prayed and you came to Jesus today, you just allowed him in to your heart and into your life today. And you said goodbye to your past. I'm going to ask you to do this. On the count of three, would you put your hands up right now? Come on. One, two, three. Let's go. Put them up. Put them up. Put them up. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Come on. Keep them up. Keep them up. Give the Lord a shout. Woo. And this and this. There's one more. This is just as important. In God's word, it says if just one comes back to him, there's a party going on in heaven. So if this was your comeback moment today, in this Easter season, I want you to do the same thing. You came back to Jesus today. On the count of three, let's go. One, two, three. Show, put him up. Put him up. Yeah. Come on, keeper. Let's go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. He deserves more praise. He deserves more praise. Come on. Lift up his name. Give him a shout. Jesus. Say it with me. Jesus. One more time. What's his name? Oh, praise you, Father. Hallelujah. I feel like we just went to Africa for a second there. I got a little of that Rwandan coming out of me. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Where do we go from here? Baptism. I mentioned to you, sometimes we, we get so caught up in our methods that we miss the message. And sometimes we are making it difficult for people to want to come to God. And in my Bible, when people came to Jesus, there was an opportunity instantly to be baptized. They didn't have to go through a program. They just wanted to meet the person that was Jesus. In Acts 15, 19, if you read it, James, the brother of Jesus, says this, let us not make it difficult for people that are coming to know God. So if you can understand salvation, you can understand a relationship, you can understand baptism, I'm going to walk you through it. It's not rocket science. The word baptism means to be fully immersed all in. And here in this church and so many churches around the world, we believe so much in this because it's the great commission to go into all the world. Matthew 28, starting in verse 18. It says, therefore, go into all the world, making disciples. What does it say? Baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey the Lord's commands. Surely he's with them always, even to the ends of the earth. So if you want to step in with Jesus today, literally, it says that when you are baptized, you're baptized with Christ. In Romans, it says, when you go under the water, it represents when Christ went to the grave. Mm -hmm. And when you come up out of the water, it represents Christ's resurrection. You are resurrected with Christ. You say goodbye to the old you, and you come up made new. For anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. I'm going to tell you this. Sometimes we are looking at even people and looking at ourselves as the old person. You see them in the flesh, but you don't see them in the spirit. They are a new creation. I want you to know that you're a new creation. They're a new creation. So when you see people being transformed, stop looking at their past. Stop looking at the flesh and start looking at the spirit. They have been made new in Christ Jesus. So we're going to worship God. And if you want to come get baptized, just come on up.